Hi, and welcome back. Um, we read to chapter four. <laughs> nope. A five. No, I don't think so. Um, gosh, I'm like really not on the ball tonight. I'm so sorry. All right, so we're going to read starting at chapter five. Nope, we read that one. Okay, so chapter <laughs> chapter five. Um, I need to do stop and chats. This is why we do them. Um, so anyways, chapter five was about him talking about her becoming a flaneur, about Diva becoming a flaneur with um, Flea. And, um, sorry, turn the sound off. And so now we're at chapter six, a big step. Diva had spent the whole night thinking about the big about the big thought from the day before. So in the morning, she was tired and impatient for Flea to arrive for his early flounering. I have been thinking, said Diva, before Flea could poke his head through the courtyard gate. I have been thinking about a flaneur like you. Of becoming, excuse me, a flaneur like you. Excellent, purred Flea. Let's go. Now? Asked Diva. A flounair does not need a plan to have an adventure, said Flea. A flounair creates an adventure whenever the opportunity arises. Oh, said Diva quietly. Even though she had spent the whole night thinking, she had not thought of that. I can show you the giant tower that can cut a cloud in half. What do you think he's talking about? Remember they're in Paris. Maybe the Eiffel Tower. Said Flea unexpectedly. It is just around the corner. Around the corner? Gulped Diva. She also hadn't thought she would have to travel that far. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny to me. She didn't have to travel that far. Come on, said Flea as he turned and dashed onto the pavement. Diva did not move. Flea looked at her from the middle of the pavement and smiled a gentle smile. You can see what um, Diva's feeling there. And you can see that Flea is being very patient. <laughs> Take a little step and see how it feels, he said. Even a little step felt like a big step to Diva. The pavement was large and different and very not courtyardy. But if Flea was there, and he was, then it couldn't be all that bad. So slowly and carefully, Diva scrunched her nose and followed in Flea's paw steps. She passed through the courtyard gate for the first time ever, leaving behind the place where she had lived her whole entire life. It took her many steps to reach Flea on the pavement, but eventually she did. Isn't this fun? said, asked Flea. Diva did not think it was fun, but it was exceptional. Something's been woken up in Diva, huh? That little that little puppy might like some adventure. Chapter 7, The Corner. Diva could not believe she was with Flea on the pavement. The world looked very different from all the way out there, out here. She could even see her apartment building. This is really something, Diva said excitedly. Do you see me? I'm flanering. We haven't finished yet, said Flea, before dashing around the corner and completely disappearing. Diva gasped. There she was, alone, outside, in the middle of the pavement, by herself, without anyone else. In one direction was her home, in the other direction was her friend. Diva took a deep breath. She scrunched her nose tight. She took a step towards the corner. Step by little step, Diva reached the corner. Then she turned and saw something wondrous. Could you imagine being Diva living that close to the Eiffel Tower and never seeing it? If Flea hadn't shown up, she would have never left the courtyard. She would have missed her opportunity of ever seeing the Eiffel Tower. 
In front of her stood a giant steel tower, completely different from how she had imagined, yet just as Flea had described it. Big and strong and gentle and delicate all at the same time. It was so beautiful. Diva felt both smaller and larger just being in its presence. A tower that amazing makes people stop and stare. A tower that tremendous makes people from all over the world come just to see it. Lots and lots and lots of people. Lots and lots and lots of people with lots and lots of feet. I am not a great flaneur yet, said Diva to herself a few seconds later, safe inside the apartment building at 11 Avenue La Play. But I am brave. Oh man, I don't know how to say this French word. The Le Doc Chimé entrance? I don't know. I never took French. Do, do, do Chimé? Do, do Chimé? If anybody knows how to say that, you can come correct me anytime. Chapter eight, the, a strange noise. Flea surprised Diva by arriving outside the courtyard gate first thing the next morning. He was eager to discuss the adventure of the tower around the corner. Diva thought she had been brave. Flea wasn't sure Diva had been as brave as she thought she had been. But then again, as Diva pointed out, Flea hadn't tried something new the day before. Suddenly, Flea became very quiet. I did not mean to hurt your feelings, said Diva. It's not that, replied Flea. He had heard a strange noise from inside the building. It sounded like ker whoosh, ker foof. Or maybe it sounded like ker foof, ker whoosh. Flea and I do the same thing when we're confused. So I have a personal connection. I have a text to self connection. When I don't understand something, a lot of times I do this. And he looks like he's raising his eyebrow right there. I do that a lot when I don't understand. Flea wanted to know what that sound was. Oh, said Diva simply. That's breakfast. Breck fast? Breck fist? Asked Flea, sounding out the word for the first time. This was exciting. Flea was discovering a new thing. He pondered for a second. Then he asked with a touch of jealousy, is Breck Fest your friend? Kind of, replied Diva with a laugh. Come and see. Suddenly, Diva ran through the doorway into 11 Avenue La Play. She looked at Flea from inside and smiled a kind smile. Take a little step and see how it feels, she said. Very funny, replied Flea, but he did not move. Are you coming? Diva asked. I am a flaneur, Flea said. Of course I am coming. But still, he did not move. Chapter 9. A Grand Sight. Flea was a great flaneur, but he was no fool. He knew there were many surprises inside buildings, some of which included brooms. The fact that brooms usually swung at visiting cats did not help things one bit. But if Diva was inside, and she was, it couldn't be that bad. So, slowly and carefully, he followed in Diva's paw steps. Flea had seen many things, and yet his tail shot up when he saw the grand entrance hall. There were giant mirrors in golden frames, fancy designs carved on the stone walls, and a marble floor that made Diva's toenails click as she walked across it. There was also an open door. That is where I live, said Diva before dashing through the doorway and completely disappearing. Flea took a deep breath and said, it is a good thing I am so brave, but he did not say it very loudly. Then he crept towards the door.
Behind the door was an apartment with a table and chairs and a wall covered with photographs of Diva sitting, smiling, and running away from things. <laughs> the photographs were all different except for one thing. Diva looked happy in all of them. Flea realized that someone must stop and look at these photographs often and smile, just like he was smiling now. Then he realized that no one had ever bothered to take a picture of him. That was a thought for Flea. Oh, sorry. That was a big thought for Flea. Big enough for him to forget where he was for a second. Flea turned to Diva to ask her about the photographs and noticed that she was sitting right next to a pair of feet. And that pair of feet was right next to a broom, yelled Flea. Run away, Diva! Run away! Okay, we're going to stop it there. We're going to be on chapter 10 tomorrow, and it's called um, A Little Bit Magic. So I think we only have a few chapters left. Yeah, we're only going to 13. So we'll finish this tomorrow. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this book. I think it's interesting because in this book so far, we've talked a lot about Diva's fears with feet. And now we're going to see what how Flea responds, especially since he's kind of afraid, obviously, of that broom and runs out of that house. So um, tune in again tomorrow and I will finish this up.